short for mistress. Well, couldn't very well keep calling myself the master. Now, could I? Why wasn't she canine? To get things straight, Murray Gold has composed some fantastic pieces of music for Doctor Who. He's done all the strange, strange creatures. He's done I Am the Doctor. He's done This Is Gallifrey. He did that Valet de Chim, or the last piece of regenerated music with the Terra Doctor. Um, and has pretty much been the only thing going for the, for the eight series of Modern Who. And as has Nicholas Briggs' Dalek voice is, and that, that particular design although they tried to alter it, but we're going to be talking about something completely different. Uh, we're going to be talking about 26 seasons of music from the original run of Doctor Who, because those pieces I don't think I've really talked about. So today, on Who Wednesday, we discuss music from the classic era. And to reference music from the classic series, I'm going to be pretty much going through the 50th anniversary collection, which was released during the 50th anniversary, and it's got loads of music from the 26 seasons. Let's get to the obvious, the Doctor Who theme. It is an amazing piece of music, of course composed by Australian composer Ron Grainer and done by Delia Derbyshire. The Doctor Who theme has remained a consistently brilliant part of the show's history, bar Trial of the Time Lord. And maybe I'll still go far to say Series 7B, but throughout it's been amazing and it got me really hyped up for the story, especially the John Perry, Tom Baker and Sylvester McCoy ones. But they're just my personal favourites. During the very first part of the very first story, Susan Foreman is listening to John Smith and the Common Men, but actually properly known as Derek Nelson and Arthur Raymond, who've composed three guitars moves too, as found on the particular soundtrack. Ian of course references that it's John Smith and the Common Men, the many times you've probably watched this episode in GIF for celebrating 50 years of it, and the fact that it's a very first Doctor Who story, I think it's really in my mind, and it's one of the most iconic pieces from that particular era. In the second ever Doctor Who story, the Daleks, which introduces the Doctor's greatest adversaries, you have some brilliant music in the forests of Scarrow, as well as some amazing um, music in the spa when the first Doctor Susan, Ian, and Barbara go through the Daleks' city. It is absolutely incredible, eerie, creepy, and it's definitely the most immersive Doctor Who story for me, and I do really enjoy the Daleks. Long, yes, but still enjoyable. One of the greatest Doctor Who villains, the Cybermen. First introduced in the Tenth Planet, and luckily, they had some pretty brilliant introductions. The cloth face, the tubing and everything, they look great, but when they're accompanied by the incredible music, it really enhances the 1960s black and white, that sort of carry on the trend of black and white camp, uh, campy hammy horror type, which is currently a thing I've been studying. Uh, it's Space Adventure um, by Martin Slaven, um, to the Tenth Planet, but the moon based music where it's blah 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 boom, blah 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 boom, absolutely brilliant. It's really creepy, it enhances the fear factor for the Cybermen in the 60s and is genuinely something I'd listen to over and over again just to really get the feels of the time. The end of John Pertwee's season, season 7, had a story called Inferno and in this story Inferno, whenever there was a bit of um, someone with green slime or someone about to turn to a primoid, Dear God, that was eerie, and that was really got me into the story of Inferno. It's It was actually quite incredible. Okay, hear me out, hear me out. You're probably seeing what you're seeing, but let me just stress that the 70s is a brilliant era in storytelling, and the script, it pretty much, um, there's background music that remains background music, stuff that is just there, and I don't really particularly notice it, but that's because I'm more compelled uh, by the scripts in the 70s. In the 80s, it makes sense, because it's, they, they have bombastic stuff, the music would help. As is the, as what I think of the new series, some of this, um, modern, bombastic, you sort of music, like, All Strange Creatures and I'm the Doctor, really, you know, bounce with energy and joy and you know those that, that is the epic thing that people hear 
So for me to jump straight to Logopolis, I apologise, but this is how I'm going. It's the end. When Tom Baker does regenerate, it's actually one of the music. It's actually the first, one of the most memorable pieces of music from the classic era, in my opinion. Um, my favourite Doctor regenerating, um, and it it was brilliant. You know the the usage usage of flutes. And everything. It was a really, really. I I did like the scene. The scene was really good, even if what led to it really wasn't substantial. It was still, it still got me, and I was interested to see where this new 80s direction go. I pro as proven by the speed. And then you'd have the credits. Peter Davison gets up. Really, really good. And it really prepared me for the 80s, I think. That's really the uproar. Well, I suppose season 18 did, but more or less, you know, you, you lead into the new direction that John Nathan Turner clearly imagined as pushing, they called pushing Tom Baker really out of the equation as he was the god of the 70s. And he'll always be the god of the 70s. Another piece of music that's probably going to get into your head is the Five Doctor Suite. All the stuff happening in the de death zone on Gallifrey, all the doctors coming together. It's, you know, something that will never, ever get out of your brain. You'll always remember the time when the five doctors came together along with every um, other companion that they could get. And it was really 80s, but also bringing in some 70s and 60s motifs, which I really enjoy. Uh, for a 20th anniversary special, it got the music quite uh, spot on. Like, I like particular moments when the second doctor and the brigadier are running away it um from the things that uh, pretty much grab them um another piece was pretty much when Turlo is, um is sitting by on the uh, a planet and is drawing that is a quite a nice moment so the five doctors suite like all the f music from the five doctors it's 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 a it's a cool piece of music um for that epic um anniversary Remembrance of the Daleks is definitely one of the greatest Dalek stories, and with that you have an amazing action suite, which really gets you into the episode, and it really revs you up your gear for um, all this Dalek action that's going about, and is genuinely just, it's a really fun track to listen to um, back over and over again. I think that's pretty much all I have to say about it. Um, it has some great music, uh, and a cliffhanger, my god. And to end the classic series, there would be worlds out there with the sky is burning, the seas asleep, and the rivers dream. People made a smoke and cities made a song. Somewhere there's danger, somewhere there's injustice, somewhere else the tea's getting cold. Come on, Ace, we've got work to do. And that is the end of the classic series. One 30 second track could just end it all really well. But I did like survival's, you know, um, quite um, intense music, as is the cause for Sylvester McCoy stuff. The Gracia and the Galaxy um, has some brilliant backing tracks as well. Uh, partic it's particularly moments uh, where I just do feel that the Doctor and Ace are the best companion Doctor dynamic. The moments where Ace in the story just says she feels like she could run forever. Eventually they did. We got uh, new adventures and stuff, and then we got the t uh, then we got 30th anniversary, and then we got the TV movie, and then we got revival, which we're celebrating 10 years of Doctor Who history. Just keeps going fast, you know. And that's what I just love about um, the whole McCoy era, the whole you know the music and and the, the, the whole thing. Really, it's 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 great. And survival is probably one of the most enjoyable musical episodes, along with the others I mentioned. And that ends the classic series music discussion. That has been my discussion on music from the classic series. It is nice time, and I am wearing a different hoodie, so. Without further ado, the news! So, who wins day news? Basically, Faye Marseille, who plays Shona in Last Christmas, has spoken out um, to a question that if, uh, if she would turn, if her characters returned to Doctor Who. And she says, and quote, There's been no talk of her returning. Definitely, I would come back. I loved working with the people. They worked. They were wonderful to work with, and incredibly talented. Capaldi, God, I fancy him so much. He's amazing. The people, the production, and the crew are the nicest people. And again, being really sick, 
Psychophantic. Psychophantic? I hope I said that right. It's really nice to set... It's a really nice setup they have in Cardiff and really good people who care about the show. I would definitely go back and do more Doctor Who. Whether they ask, have asked me back, I don't know. No one's rung, so I've got to let it go and be thankful I was in it in the first place. Well, it'd be interesting to see her come back, but uh, not any time soon. As is part of the course, we have some leaked Series 9 footage. It is of a stunt double on a bike. Um, and it would be Clara, similar to the day of a doctor. Um, she passes her, she passes some kids on the bike, and there is sort of a little exchange, sort of a, a, a script leak, if it were. Clara says, exciting, isn't it? Cole Hill Pupa, I'm frightened. Clara says, same thing, shouldn't you be at school? So, yeah, another Cole Hill story. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I'm back now. Hang on, sorry guys, just eating an apple. Yeah. It's been fun doing it and I'm I I'm glad I could come back and I am. Look at me. In the same attire and that. Yeah, Missy's the master, she's back. I did a friends with who on it. I I, I think our opinions of her are quite clear and Yeah. Welcome back, I guess. Now it is time to read your lovely comments from the previous Who Wednesday, which was the underaged companions of Who. So, yes, I'm just actually learning it up. Um, I haven't done this pre... thing. Ah, here it is. So without further ado, let's read the first comment from David Who. Hello, David Who. He says, I like, liked Victoria, but she's not in my top 20 companions. Oh, I see there. I, I see. I have seen the reconstruction of the evil of the Daleks, and I really don't understand how she can go off with the Doctor and Jamie immediately after losing her father to the Daleks. To me, she will always be a she will always be a traumatized character that forever screams and screams. There's been too many of them recently. Liz Shaw is my number eighteenth companion. No, number eighteen companion in my sorry number eighteen in my top, top companions list. Third try. Uh, I totally agree that she was awesome and underrated. Indeed. Harry Sullivan is the weakest male companion, in my opinion, largely because he is written quite badly into the episodes and then just leaves the show in terror of the Zygons, without so much of a hint of sadness. Yeah, I, I probably agree with that. He does sort of, you know, go off without much sadness. But I, I think, I thought it was, you know, fitting. He's male after all, you know, females and males. A bit emotional, males and males just like, alright mate, see you next time, that kind of thing, sorry. Um, hmm. Then he returns with, with the most confusing cameo ever in the Android Evasion. Yeah, I thought it was quite confusing when I watched the Android Evasion, I thought, ooh, they're in it. I, I sort of bought the Unifars box set, and I sort of, um, no, I knew about it was on the Unifars box set, and I, I um, completely forgot <laughs> um, during watching this episode that it would, that unit would play some part, and yes, it was a bit odd. And hardly does anything for the plot again. So yeah, he is the weakest male companion. I've seen weaker. <laughs> Romana is one character played by two different actresses, so to correct you. No. No, I did know. Mary Tam and Lala Ward. Regeneration 1 and Regeneration 2, I believe. Um, she's number 20 on my list. So Romana is lower than Liz Shaw. I think your taste is absolutely fantastic. Turner is my number 19 on the list. And his very interesting character with a dark side. He's unique in, in that his kind com, kind of companion. I've never really ever been seen it's, unless you count Adam Mitchell, the Knife Doctor, which didn't work out well. Do you know what? Today I just watched the uh, the long game because I was on uh, watch. It's not bad. It's not good. I think it's quite mediocre. So, yeah. But anyways, Turlo is a good candidate for a character from the classic series to possibly return in the future somehow. Or probably be rewritten as a new character. Hmm. Grace Holloway is one of my all-time most disliked characters. Yuck. Craig is great. I love Craig, but he never tried to travel in the TARDIS, so is he technically a companion? Perhaps not. Well, Liz Shaw didn't travel in the TARDIS, um, but you'd consider her a companion. She sort of was in... Or the Brigadier. Although... Three Doctors may have changed it up a bit. Um, so yeah, that was 
David, who quite a long comment, but a really good one. The next comment is from Labin35. I had to do two takes because that was quite a long comment. That was cool. Yes, he says, great video, Adam. I wouldn't necessarily say that Turlo and Adam are underrated because nobody really likes them. I like Adam-ish. That one aspect in the long game. Other than that, he was decent. Anyway, they really didn't really do anything to gain any love except Turlo, saving Perry and Pat Fire. Somebody who I think is fairly underrated is Martha Jones. No! She did so much in one series and yet peep, there are people who look past her because of the other companions in the modern series. Well, no, I don't think so. I think for one series she sort of had, um, uh, a, a, you know, a great, you know, a present outside who in Torchwood and in Future Doctor Who stories. Um, I think judging by her many appearances she's still relevant to the Doctor, uh, particularly Tenant's Doctor, so yeah. But I can see where you're coming from. Like, um, probably most underrated mo um, sort of main companion I'd say, yeah. Thank you for all the comments. So that has been pretty much it for Who Wednesday. Thank you for watching, enjoying, liking, and commenting, and subscribing. And I'll see you on Saturday. No, I'll see you on Monday again. It's crack video week. But I'm boom. Yeah. Goodbye. Next week, my friends, your life may depend on it. Good luck.